I am currently a uh, photo editor at the Baltimore Sun and I've been a photographer there um, and I still consider myself a photographer. That's, um, that's who I am, that's what I do. The photo editor thing started a few years ago um, where able, I was able to start working on projects where I could help work with other photographers along with shooting projects myself. Um, as far as the iPhone photography, about seven years ago, I was asked to um, do a little bit more work with social media and, and to post a few more things related to stories that I was working on. And um, I really wasn't sure exactly. I mean, I didn't do too much Twitter stuff. I didn't do anything with Instagram, but someone had introduced me to Instagram. So I started really poking around and I was amazed at the quality of photography that was coming out that I was finding. I was kind of going down rabbit holes and finding amazing photographers all around the world. Um, but then I noticed there were a few people that were actually using their cell phones uh, to produce some of these images, which I was kind of amazed by because I was not a big fan of using my cell phone um, on assignment, which we were asked to do once in a while to get pictures back uh, on like breaking news and, and assignments such as that. So it basically just became a challenge for me. Like if they can do it, then I'm gonna do it and see what I can do with my cell phone. And it just kind of grew from there. Um, I'm, I don't really care too much about the quality. I mean, I have expensive cameras that I use for work every day and the cell phone quality is not very good, but I'm, these are not for billboards. I'm not reproducing these. They're mostly used uh, or viewed on cell phones and iPads. So I really wasn't too uh, concerned about the quality of the images. It's just more about the challenge being able to shoot an image with the cell phone. Um, the other thing was that I loved working in the darkroom years ago. Uh, when I worked at the News Journal um, in Wilmington, the Philadelphia Inquirer and the school paper, working in the darkroom was one of the, my most favorite things ever. So if you've ever had a chance to work in a darkroom, you understand, and if you haven't done it and you have the opportunity, it's like a, it's an, it's an amazing, experience watching your images just kind of appear out of nowhere. So with the cell phone photography and doing the black and white, I was able to basically have um, a kind of a dark room at my fingertips. So I was able to just produce images um, and post them all in black and white. So when I'm out shooting, I'm, I'm looking for shapes, I'm looking for lines. Um, and because I shot black and white for a long time, I do have a sense for what things might actually look like in black and white before I shoot them. Um, and then of course, in the camera, I use an app called Snapseed. And what I can do is I bring the color pictures into Snapseed and then I take the saturation out and I continue to work with the contrast and um, the cropping in all the pictures that I work on. So I don't use any filters. So every single picture that I work on is, um, is cropped and toned individually. So this is something, it's um, a piece of artwork, uh, I believe it's along President Street, heading down into um, Harbor East area. So a lot of times there are people in my photographs, but if I find anything that has interesting abstracts, interesting shapes, designs, um, I play with them, I probably, spend more time walking around and looking than I do shooting. Um, and even after I shoot something, I, I play with it a little bit um, in the phone. And if I like it, I'll post it. I'd say I probably post maybe 10% of what I shoot, maybe even less. If I don't like it, I won't post it. I, I don't wanna uh, bore anyone with pictures. I'm always looking for something that's a little bit different. Um, this was taken at the state fair and um, they were setting up for the state fair. This gentleman was putting um, some lights on the top of one of his trailers and uh, he actually stopped because he saw me taking pictures and he thought he was messing my photo up and I had to basically let him know he could do whatever he needed to do because I was actually taking pictures of him as well. Hey, Lloyd, excuse me, what iPhone yes. model do you use? So I've had a few different models. 
I'm always several, several models behind what the, the most current models are because they're generally company phones. So right now I'm using an, an iPhone SE. I think it's like a, a, a seven or an eight. Um, and then when I was starting out, some of the older photos are with a four and a five. So the quality is, is really not very good. And, and again, like I said, I'm not really concerned about the quality. It's more about, um, uh, it, it's just the excitement of trying to make something work. Because I, and I can't zoom, these, these cameras on the phones that I'm using, um, you can't zoom very well. With the cameras that I use for work, of course, you can zoom, you can be far away from your subject. With the iPhone, you have to be very close to your subjects. So you, you get very personal with them, even though you're, you're trying not to let them know you're taking their picture, which is a whole other part to this iPhone thing that I'll, I'll get into as well. This was down in the uh, Oriole Spring training. So this is another one. So there are times that I find the space that I want to shoot in and I wait for people to walk into my frame. And then there are times such as this one, this was down in Ocean City. Um, and I saw this gentleman walking along the boardwalk and he had this neat hat on and the lighting was really, really neat. So I basically, I kind of just followed him along the boardwalk a little bit without letting him know that I was following him and trying to figure out a way to make a picture of him that was interesting. I tried a few different things and this is, this is the one that I ended up with that I liked the most. Um, the backstory to this picture is that I woke up very early on, a, we were away on, on vacation. I woke up really early and decided since my family was sleeping that I would go down to the boardwalk and just play. And um, my family woke up later to find that I was gone and they thought that I had left them. So that's become a big joke. Every time we go away on vacation that dad's gonna leave us again, uh, go wander around taking pictures somewhere. This was another, um, this was down in the Virginia area. Another one where I was heading to an assignment and just found this really interesting um, kind of shaft of light coming, it's, it's a bridge and the light's coming through the bridge in two different places. So I went under the bridge and I just waited for for people to walk through through the frame. And obviously you can tell this person knows that he saw me standing on the other side pointing the camera over. So that's why he's looking over. I spend a lot of time doing stuff like this. You know, I find interesting light. Um, I love shapes, uh, contrast, and I layer lots and lots of things. That's something the video was talking about. I layer things and um, I do a lot of reflections. Um, I shoot from different uh, vantage points so that it's not always from eye level. Uh, I always try and change things up a bit. So this is, um, I'm gonna show you where I started and where I finished. So this is Main Street in Bel Air. My wife was shopping somewhere. I decided to wander around. And um, when I'm looking, I'm, I usually find one thing in a specific spot that I find interesting. And in this, I just looked through the window and I saw this kind of neat painting up on the wall. I think this is a hair studio that was closed. So, I'm, so I, I play, that's kind of what I do. I just, I find something interesting and then I keep working it until I get something that I think is, is an interesting image. Whether I use it or not, whether it works or not, it doesn't really matter. You just, you're trying to um, try different things with it and explore things. So this one, the only way for me to make that face show up was to actually have me standing in front of it. You can actually see my camera down there too, my cell phone. Um, and then this is the, the final product. When I go back, I, I crop a lot too. I don't, um, I burn, I dodge. That's one of the things that's really nice about the uh, Snapseed app is I can go into specific areas just like I would in a dark room and I can dodge and I can burn. Um, and I also crop things to get them out. You know, when I'm shooting this, I know that those cars down in the bottom right, they're not helping my frame at all. So I do know at some point when I edit this that I'm gonna crop them out as much as I can. Same to the left. Um, there's a little something over here on the left side of the frame 
So I'm going to crop that out. And the same with the right side of the frame. I'm going to crop that out as well. Things like this, you know, you find something that's kind of fun. This was over in Owings Mills, heading over to a Ravens practice. I pulled off the side of the road and just tried to play with the fence. Other things that are graphic, you know, again, always looking. Something that Sandy said is um, always looking around. This is, um, I think this is on St. Paul by Mercy Medical Center. Um, recently, they put um, a bunch of pipes that stick out of the ground that have the, uh, the steam rise up above the pipe. So sometimes these pictures are a little harder to make now. But before, when the steam was just coming right out of the ground, out of the grates, um, you could really have fun with people walking through. I'm going to walk just um, for a few minutes. Uh, walking through the steam, uh, which I really love to do. And again, um, this probably isn't cropped that much. So the subject here is probably no more than a couple feet away. And what I do is I pre-focus the cell phone. If, if I put myself in position where I know people are crossing the street, I can pre-focus on a spot that they will walk through. And then I just kind of wait for them to walk. And then, you know, once they walk through my frame, I start taking pictures. And again, I'll, I'll shoot several of these. I'll, I'll, I might spend 10, 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, just trying to make something like this work. Um, I'm super patient when it comes to finding something that I think will work. And I'm more than happy to just really wait it out. I'm almost patient to a fault. There are times when I just have to pull the plug and say, okay, it's, it's time to go, it's not gonna work. This was um, part of a fashion shoot that we did at Pimlico. Again, just using shapes and lines. Um, snow is a great uh, way to shoot black and white because what it does is it just gives you that beautiful, clean white background, um, especially if you're shooting animals and lines and fences. Um, it's, uh, it's high contrast. And it's a, it's a really nice thing to play with when it snows. This was, um, I think this was over in uh, Fairhill. We were doing a feature on one of the Preakness horses uh, a few years back that was coming to uh, Pimlico. And again, just another way of using you know, negative space, your subject doesn't always have to be you know, smack dab in the middle of your frame. This was something at Morgan State. I was out there shooting assignment and they have this really cool wall. And it's some type of tile work on the outside of the wall. And um, it was just a matter of just waiting for people to walk by. And I think I spent like maybe 10 minutes over there uh, before my assignment was supposed to start. And, um, and this was kind of a fun picture of two people walking in opposite directions. Uh, and it gives you a sense of scale at the same time too. And there's so much texture um in those tiles these are the kinds of things that i love i love to find things that have texture and shape this is another one this is just like a timing thing you, know, you find again the shapes of the, of the window the lines on the ceiling um the vertical lines on the windows um it just it really lent itself to something that was kind of fun and i just kind of waited for someone to enjoy their ice cream and snapped a few pictures And this is one where I, it's another one of those where I kind of stalked people. I kind of follow along without letting them know that I'm following along, taking their picture. Here you guys had a great hat. I'm kind of a sucker, sucker for hats. So anytime I find someone wearing some sort of interesting hat, if the background is nice, I will keep working it. And this was um, one of the ships down at the Inner Harbor. And I just, I, I think the reason why there are a lot of silhouettes is I love, I love the shape of the face. And, and there are also a lot of um, profiles. I just love the shape of, of people's faces. And, and then when they're wearing hats, it's even better because it creates another shape on top of the face. Um, I just, it's just a fun way to, um, to capture some of the silhouettes. Obviously, if someone is looking right at you or behind, it's just kind of a, a shape with no texture because you can't see the face.
is another one. This, um, I think this is now, I think Ripley's over at Dinner Harbor is gone. Um, but this was another a way to, you find something that's interesting and you frame it up and you just wait. I think I probably waited like 45 minutes for, for someone to come walking up here. Um, and same with this, this is again, it's just shapes, um, getting close to your subject, feeling your frame. Um, and then again, when I put it in my phone, I'm playing a lot with the cropping, like deciding what, what do I want in, what do I want out? Um, if there's something that's really not helping my image, then I'm gonna try and crop it out, but still keep the composition in the frame. So I'm sorry, Lloyd, I just have to ask you, this is Sandy. Sure. sure. So I know you're using Snapseed. So what are you doing to get your blacks black? What, what are you doing to get those silhouettes? Okay, so the first thing I do um, for something like this, um, obviously I, I have my frame figured out and I know it's going to be a silhouette because I know I have a bright background. So they should be pretty dark to start. Like I'm not going in and doing any burning and dodging on the people to try and get them to be, to make them darker and make them a silhouette. So when I go into Snapseed, um, I have my color image. And the first thing I do is I take my saturation out. They have um, different filters. Like I said, I don't use the filters. I go in and I take all the saturation out. Once you take the okay. saturation out, you're gonna have, um, it's gonna be black and white, but it's gonna be a lot of gray as well. And then what I do is I go into the contrast and I start playing with the contrast a little bit. I start bringing the contrast up and the contrast will start to boost the highlights a little brighter and it'll start to bring your grays into a, a deeper gray or sometimes black, depending on how mm -hmm. far you wanna go with your contrast. Mm -hmm. Um, and then from there, you know, there's a really cool little burning and dodging tool. So if there are certain areas of your frame that you want to burn, which means making it a little darker, you can, you can burn them down or you can, you can lighten them up. So you can actually bring the contrast up in, in specific areas. So once I take the saturation out, I'm really playing with the contrast. And then there's also highlights. You can boost your highlights up a little bit, and you can also take your shadows and bring your shadows down. So there's all sorts of things that you can play with um, to create your black and white. And it's almost the same thing I used to do in the dark room. We used to have filters, um, if anyone worked in the dark room before, where you would put a, a red filter um, over um, your the paper that you were exposing and you can, you can change the amount of contrast that was in your black and white picture. This is kind of like doing the same thing. And that's kind of like, that's always been my rule. Like the things that I could do in the dark room, I always feel that I can do with my photos. The same with the photos that I work for when I'm doing stuff in the newspaper. Um, just like we don't clone anything in the newspaper. We don't take anything out. I don't really take anything out in these photos either. And thank sometimes you. things are subtle. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> um, <clears throat> And a, a lot of times there are people in the photos and they're subtle. You know, there's someone down in the bottom center of that. It just a lot of reflections and lines and shapes. So this is one. This I think I shot, I think about a month ago. This is pretty new. So this is where I start. You know, I find something that's kind of interesting. And what's, again, interesting is that there's that one kind of bright strip at the top of that frame. And it's a slightly busy intersection. This is over in Harbor East, um, not far from the Four Seasons. And there were some people that were walking back and forth by that space. So to me, even though this is a color photo, when I'm, I'm looking at what I'm shooting, I kind of envision what the black and white is going to look like. And I know that even though those bricks are kind of like a, a clay color, um, I know that's gonna be gray. It's gonna be a light gray. And I know the subject obviously is going to be dark. And then in the foreground, um, the thing that I get the most joy out of is being able to make a picture that's, I don't wanna say it's never been done before, but if I told you what this was reflected off of, you probably wouldn't believe me. And if I said, hey, go out there right now and try and figure out what I reflected that off of, it probably would be pretty hard to, to find it. I was walking back and forth and I noticed there was a scooter. 
sitting on the on the other corner right in front of me. So I walked up to the scooter and there's a at the very top of the scooter, there's a little black plastic piece that's at the, the very top of a scooter. So next time you see a scooter, you can check it out. And what I did was I put the camera right up against the, it was a shiny black piece. I put my cell phone right up against the edge of the shiny top of the scooter and angled it up towards the building and then waited for someone to come walking through that space. Um, and then, you know, once I know I'm, I'm kind of in the ballpark, then I know eventually I'm gonna have to do some cropping and toning. And then, so this is the final product of that picture. Um, you know, to the upper left, there's some letters up here, which I knew when I'm shooting this, I'm somehow gonna crop that out. There is um, some sort of truck here, which I wasn't a big fan of, but there just was no way for me to get it out when I was shooting. So it is up there, but I did tone down the corner a little bit, so it's not as bright. Um, and then again, in the building area, and can you see my cursor moving? Yes. Okay, so in this building area here, um, you know, I boosted the contrast and I also, I probably selected this whole area and just boosted the contrast a little bit to really give the, um, the building reflection some extra pop so that you can see the lines and the shape. So this is the kind of stuff that I enjoy the most, like just finding something that's just completely different. Um, the other nice thing is that I spend pretty much every day for the last 30 years at the newspaper telling stories, um, having to get names of people, um, which I love to do. I love talking with people. I love hearing their stories, um, you know, getting permission to take their photos. This is kind of like a release for me because there are no rules. Um, I don't have to ask people for permission. I don't have to get their names. Um, 99.9% .9 of the time, they don't even know that I'm photographing them. And that's kind of the fun part too. Um, I do something called, uh, I'll get to it, I'll show you, I'll bring up another photo. Um, this is um, over in Little Italy. I was there for a meeting. I was supposed to take pictures of a meeting and I saw that kind of neat um, painting. It's like, I think it's on wood uh, at Cafe Gia. So I was playing with this. And then as I continued to walk around, um, um, I shot this as well. So it's, again, this is just the way that I work. I find something that I find interesting, which is this painting. And then I figure out different ways that I can try and shoot it that's somewhat interesting. But they all have their little twist to them. You know, this one, if you shoot at eye level with the table, you can't tell it's a table. And if, if I was shooting too high, it still didn't work because the legs got hidden. So this was one where I decided to go just a little bit lower so you can tell that there's actually a table there. And I, my favorite part is the, um, the legs that hold the table up, the legs and, and this part, the stand, because I just, I love the contrast. I love the tones in here and it makes it look like she's sitting on the table. Yeah, cool. So here's another one. Um, again, it's, it's, it's like the building photo from earlier. So this is where I start. Um, I think this was at um, Inverness. I think I was there with, uh, with my family having a drink and we were relaxing. They had some old cars out there. And obviously the interesting thing to me was you had a couple of things going on here. You had those really um, interesting reflections of the, the leaves that jumped out at me right away. Um, of course, there's a guy with a hat. And like I said, you see a guy with a hat, you got to figure out how to make a picture. So I had leaves, I had a guy with a hat, and I had him on the other side of the uh, of the car. You know, I, you could see him through that window. So I played a lot with different crops, and this was like my the final version that I decided to go with. And if I go back again, um, there's someone on the right hand side over here who in the long run really wasn't helping the photo out. I was really hoping I would have him silhouetted somewhere in here, but it just didn't work out. Um, I think he turned at the last minute. So I decided I was gonna crop him out and just go with the front windshield. 
the guy with the hat and and the leaves as a reflection. Um, so at first, it's kind of hard to tell exactly what you're looking at. But this gives you a little better perspective because you could see you're actually looking through two windows before you even get to the subject. And this was taken over at center stage. I was there to do a play. Um, oops. And this was the same thing. I saw this lady coming in with this really cool hat. So I, I got behind her. She was maybe three or four people back in line waiting to walk into the, um, into the play. So I, I focus on her. So I know I'm focused at a certain distance. There's a little bit of movement kind of in her hat here. I mean, it's pretty dark. Um, but I focused on the hat and I just kept this, I kept pace with her as she started to walk in and, um, and then lifted the camera up so that I can kind of frame all these lights above her hat and some of the bodies that are on pictures, um, up in the left-hand corner. And I might've shot seven or eight photos as she was looking around, trying to figure out where to, where to sit and decided to go with this. It's another out on assignment and church across the street and it almost looked like the church was on fire based on the clouds that were coming up behind it. And I just kind of kept playing with it and playing with it as the clouds were moving. And then, uh, you know, a bird went flying through it. And I thought, okay, well, that makes, that makes the frame for me. So uh, again, just something different. I love clouds. Anytime you, you can work with clouds and black and white, um, clouds are always beautiful. Anytime I see really interesting clouds, it's almost like, okay, well, how can I make a photo of those clouds? Another one, um, this was in a restaurant. And again, this is just playing. I kind of have it framed up and I'm just waiting for people to walk through uh, one of those squares. So this is an example. This is um, three different photos of the same, same subject. So the subject is this, print in the window, which I found kind of neat. So I, I kept playing with it. And this is one version of that print. This is another version of that print. You know, there's a subject here. Wasn't really a big fan of this one. But again, it's it's the thought process. You know, you're just constantly working something. How are you going to make a picture out of it? How are you going to make a picture out of it? And then the last one, which was my favorite, which was this one. This one's kind of... Um, Kind of intense looking and i remember when i was going through them um the eyes were already intense to begin with but it just it's amazing how different this looks from this angle again with me uh being the shadow back there to highlight the eye Loy? yes um i have a question from a member um yes. are you shooting uh thinking about a square format are you for, you know are you shooting with that in mind yes that, that's a really good question um i am and the, the hardest part for me is again i've got 30 years of shooting in a in a horizontal format you know 16 by 9 or whatever format you're shooting with your cameras i'm always shooting as a horizontal always, but when I'm doing the cell phone stuff, it's a square. The reason why it's a square is because, again, I decided Instagram, when it started, was always in that square format. Mm -hmm. So I decided I'm just going to stick with the square format. And again, it's part of this whole challenge thing to make this work, because normally I see life as a rectangle, the way it would fit in my camera. So when I'm driving around and I'm looking at things, I'm, I'm fitting that into that rectangular format. But when I pick up the cell phone, it's kind of like you're turning the switch. You're thinking black and white and you're thinking square. So yes, when I'm shooting with the cell phone, I'm definitely thinking in, in a square format. How am I going to fit this into uh, a square format? And I'm shooting it as a square. I'm not, um, when I go to take a picture of something, let's see if I go back again, I'm going to jump back real quick, you know, to this, this is the format. This is the original photo. It's square. So whenever I'm shooting with a cell phone, I go from rectangular format to square format so that my focus is how is this going to fit in a square format? Um, and again, it's, you know, I've had people ask me, how come you don't post your other pictures on Instagram? Every once in a blue moon, I do, but I don't feel good about it. I just like, 
I like to, the tradition of it and the challenge of, okay, I'm just gonna shoot this with the cell phone. It's gonna be square and it's gonna be black and white. I don't know why, I just, I love the black and white. Every once in a while I post a color picture, um, but not that often. So yeah, so it's a good question. You do have to think differently when you're shooting in a square format than if you do uh, shooting in a horizontal format. Thank you. Uh, sure. Um, again, stay fair. Um, I wish I could have shot a little wider. I've been given a bunch of those lenses that attach to the cell phones where you can shoot really wide or you can have a little zoom lens. Um, I, I originally started to play with them, but they become really cumbersome because it takes a while. It takes a few seconds to take your camera out of the case screw on a lens or get the little contraption to screw on a lens to the cell phone. Like it's just, it was never worth the time. So I'm just shooting with the camera that's in the phone, almost never zoomed. You know, I crop afterwards, but I don't zoom and I don't use a wide angle. This would have been a time where it would have been nice to have a little bit more room to back up. So I could have gotten the full circle, but you know, again, that's part of the limitations of the cell phone. It, the lens is the lens, you know, there's no wide angle, there's no zoom, you just go with what you got and you make it work. Again, this is another layering effect. I'm just, you know, the flag was waving for the guy with the hat walking around. So I just, again, it's just playing and it's being patient and waiting for the wind to pick up and blow that open. And hopefully, you know, someone walks by behind. So this is down in Fort McHenry. Um, a lot of negative space. I mean, it's, it's all about shapes. It's really simple. It's, you know, that archway and that little tunnel for anyone who's ever been to Fort McHenry that leads out to that main, that main area in the fort. And they were having a, a service that day. So again, it's, it's a guy with a hat. The only thing that might have made this better is if he would have been profile and I would have seen the hat in his face. But um, you just learn to try and figure out how do you make a frame interesting with your crop. And here's another, this is at the Inner Harbor. Uh, it's right across from, uh, I think the Hard Rock Cafe. And this is like a, a frame inside a frame inside a frame. Um, I walked by and I saw the, you know, the, the light in the background. I saw this big white frame here. And I was like, okay, I, I've got to figure out how to make a picture with this. And I just waited for someone. There were people walking around in there, but I didn't get the right moment until someone stopped here. And then I just waited for them to turn left or right and took a few more pictures. And uh, this was a fun one. I really like this one. Uh, this is that little um, pirate cruise that they have at the Inner Harbor. Um, it was getting ready to take off and they had the pirate flag over here and it was blowing all over the place. And again, it was just, this is the format, square format. So I just kind of kept moving left as it was, was blowing and as the ship was moving, I just kind of kept moving with it to try and fill half the frame with the flag, half of it with the ship. Um, and again, just trying to do something a little bit different. So this is another photo down in Harbor East. So this is, artwork that's in the window of one of the stores across the street. The thing that obviously makes this picture work is that you have that bright wall. Anytime you have like bright light in the background, it's a really nice way how to highlight um, a subject. So it's not a full silhouette, but you get a sense that there's someone walking by and then there's streaks of light coming through, hitting some of the artwork in the window at the same time. So you've got artwork in the window, you've got a reflection, you have a person in there, you've got some really interesting buildings in the background. And again, those are the things that will capture my attention. This was, I think, the same night that I shot the woman with a the hat. They have a really interesting wall inside um, um, it's the name of the place over there. I'm right? blanking out of the name of the place. But same thing, you know, there's interesting letters uh, they get letters, numbers on the wall and just waiting for someone to walk through. Uh, center stage, I'm sorry. 
So this was on, um, sorry about that. This is over on Harper Road. Um, they had one of those love murals on the wall. I had a little bit of time in between assignments and I walked over there. I was like, oh, this is kind of fun. I've, I photographed them before and um, found interesting strings of lights in the sky. So like, okay, let me see how I can figure this out. The other hard part was in the background, you can see the top of a tree back here. So I had to make sure that I stayed low enough to keep most of the trees off the roof. Um, if you start coming up too high and the trees start poking through, you kind of lost this really nice edge of the uh, of the building. So again, just having fun playing, keeping the love sign off center a little bit, and then using some of these other shapes and lines to create an image. And this is another. So this this is actually in our office. This is a guy. He's doing some cleaning. So in front of me to the left is a um, a window. And the window is reflecting some of the stuff that we have printed on one of our walls. So there's like four different layers happening here. On the right, there's a window, which is reflecting all of the words over here. And um, obviously in between you have um, the gentleman just poking through. And then in the background is actually the newsroom with these lights that are streaking through in the background. And then they're reflected again in this, in this window. So this is something that doesn't, it doesn't look that complicated, but it wasn't the easiest thing to pull off. But again, these are the kinds of things that, that are fun to, to try and make work. This was something at the Inner Harbor. I mean, I saw something, it was this gigantic star that they had. I just got really close to it and just again, started playing, waiting for people to walk through. Lloyd, Lloyd. This was something in a shop. It was a dressing room and they had a painting that instead of hanging on the wall was just sitting on the floor. And I thought it was kind of neat. It, it looked like she was staring right at us you through the lines. So I love the vertical lines and uh, the expression on the, the painted face. And again, the quality is not great on this. It's a little bit of a crop, but this is, um, this is shot through a beach chair. So what you see, on the left and the right is um, kind of an Adirondack chair. And this is just a little bit of space between the pieces of wood on the chair. It almost looks a little bit like a cross. And then you have some light that's kind of bursting through here. Lloyd, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, sorry. We have another question if you don't mind. No, not at all. Are you using Snapseed on your iPhone? Are you processing yeah. on your iPhone? Yes, and not all on of these iPad. Yes, all of these are done on the. Um, I'm shooting them on the iPhone, and I'm editing all of these photos on my iPhone as well. Um, so again, that's that's part of the fun of it is that you can do it all with your phone. Um, so the video that I was sh trying to show earlier, and I'll try and show it again. I'm not really sure what was happening. I've got so it working. Video, you I've have got, it working. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Um, if you want, you can show it, but so what this video does is I, um, started a blog probably a few years ago. It didn't last that long. Once I took this new position, I wasn't out on the street as much. Um, we kind of stopped, but one of the blogs that I did was, um, you know, how do you go about finding some of this stuff? Cause that was one of the questions I used to get asked, well, how do you, what do you see? People would come up and say, okay, well, what do you see right now? Like, well, Right now, I don't see anything. You know, you have to walk around, you have to look for things. A lot of these photos don't just appear. You have to, you have to kind of hunt them out and, and then make them work um, by experimenting with some things like I did with the top of the, um, with the scooter and shooting reflection. Like they don't just jump out. They're all there and anyone can really do it. It's just a matter of like finding it. So this is another reflection. And if Sandy's able to get that to play in a minute, what you'll see is this is a reflection in the window of, um, of a music store. And then across the street is um, a, a parking garage. I think that's part of the Peabody, I believe. And um, I basically shot the reflection in the window of the music store 
to see what was happening across the street and then turn that into a photograph. So, and that's the whole process with the video. So if, if you wanna try Sandy, you can see if that will play and people will get a chance to see that. And if it doesn't, I can get back to, um, let me stop sharing for a second. Can you see that? Yep. A lot of times I look at the full landscape and the kind of the larger palette and I look for the smaller things that I find interesting. And off to the right is that doorway, that archway. I really do love the light. The light across that is just really neat. And then what I try and do is figure out a different way to shoot this. Come across the street, you've got Ted's music. And when you look at Ted's music, Get a whole bunch of things in the window. These are the kinds of things that I do to entertain myself. What I do is I look at what's interesting in Ted's window and what's interesting across the street. And what that is, is in a black and white, that would look really neat. And that's what I love about black and white. You layer things, you put things in the foreground, the background. I always love to have people in the photos. In the Instagram photos, I'm shooting in a square format. Right now, it's horizontal. But you get the idea of what I'm looking at. There's your picture. Thank you for uh, for getting that to play. I appreciate it. On so. Um, oh, sorry. Hang on, <laughs> just a second. Okay, you can share now. Okay, great. There we go. So, oh, let it go again. So that gives you an idea of like the process that I take when I'm trying to find some of these photos. It's um, I find something that looks interesting. And then you try and figure out how to make it work. Um, I mean, I spent a lot of years at the newspaper um, getting into certain situations where there isn't a lot going on. And you really have to try hard to figure out how to shoot something, how to come back with a photo. The nice thing about the Instagram is that I, there's no pressure. If I don't come up with something, if I walk around for two or three hours and I shoot and I, and I don't see anything that I really like, well, I had two or three hours of walking around in nice weather and looking for things and maybe meeting some people. Um, I don't have that pressure. I'd have to come up with a picture. Whereas when I'm shooting for the paper uh, and I go out to an assignment, um, I have to find something. I can't just come back and say, you know what? I, I just didn't feel it today. Um, you have to find something. So that's part of the thing is being able to make something work out of nothing. So this is another one. Um, this is shot over near the bg &E building on, I think it's on Fayette. Um, it was uh, election night several years back and there was nothing going on. There was a big break. So I wandered outside and photographed. So these, these windows back here are actually all green. It would have made an interesting color picture, but I decided to go with black and white. It's all green. And in the foreground here, you see this little lip. This is actually the top of one of those metal garbage cans that you see around Baltimore. And you know, mm -hmm. the metal garbage can and all the way around has these like openings. So what I did was I stuck the camera inside the garbage can so that I'd have two layers of these um, lines that you can see that- That's cool. Kind of create a, like a, again, it's a frame within a frame within a frame. And then it was just a matter of waiting for someone to walk through. And luckily this guy walked through, he had the, he had the great beard. He had the hat, he had something in his hand and it was the timing just worked out. Um, you know, with the cell phone, it's a little bit harder with timing. Sometimes it's a little bit of a crapshoot, uh, but I, I got lucky with this. So this is kind of fun. This is another one like the, um, the one with the scooter where you're doing something that's just, okay, let me just put my camera in here and figure out how to make this work too, you know, in a garbage can. So 
having fun with that, you know, hats and shapes and light. So here's another one um, early morning over in um, Harford County. I was driving along and saw the horses out in the field. So I, I pulled, I pulled back around, came back and I kept playing with different versions of this. Um, trying to get the, because at one point the horses were standing together and it looked a little awkward because it looked like the horse had eight legs. So you kind of keep waiting and you wait and you wait until you get something. And then it's a matter of once, once they started to spread apart and walk in opposite directions, then it's kind of on me, obviously as a photographer to just jockey myself left and right. Um, sometimes literally just an inch up, an inch down to get them to frame in those two areas in between the two fences. So this, this was kind of a fun one. I think I spent maybe about half an hour. I was actually on my way to a baseball game early on Sunday morning and, uh, and stopped to make this. This is another farm. Again, these are things that I look for. I've got interesting shapes. I would have loved to have had a horse go walking by over here, but that didn't happen when I was there. So it's just, this is all about shapes. I mean, you have the lights that go down the center of the, the barn, the shapes on the left, these fun little shapes on top. And then you're just waiting for something to again, enter your frame. Then Baltimore just playing with shadows. More lines and shapes. So this was um, in Federal Hill, again, in between assignments, I saw the big uh, cat. I hadn't seen that before. So I'm sure it's been there for a while up, uh, up on the inside of this um, alleyway. And I walked around for a while. I'm like, well, how can I shoot this? Like, there's a really, that's a really neat thing on the side of the building. What can I do to try and make something interesting? Now, this is another time where, for whatever reason, I don't remember why I couldn't back up enough. So I wish I could have had a little bit more of a wide angle or a little bit more room to back up, but I'm also reflecting this off the top of a car. So this is a car that's across the street and I've got my camera just, just along the top of the car. Obviously it's not my car, so I'm being very careful not to put my camera against it because uh, I don't want to scratch someone else's car, but I'm just using the car as a way to reflect whether you use um, a car, whether you use a window, you can use um, water. Um, that's laying on the ground, puddles of water. You can reflect things off of those and make great pictures. And so I was just playing around with, okay, how can I, what can I do with this? So I did wait for a while to see if I can get people walking through, but I had a limited amount of time. So it just, um, I kind of just went with that. Just little detail stuff. You see little streaks of light and you just, again, you just play with it and try and figure out how to just make a fun photo. Uh, this is out in Haver de Grace. They've got, um, uh, it's right in one of the parks there. They have this big sculpture. It's a really cool sculpture. It's made, if you look, it's made up of really small fish. Um, the problem with shooting this is that if you look over to the left, there's a tree back here. So if the tree wasn't there, there's definitely a way to make a really neat photo of this. But because the tree is there, um, you, you can't move any further to your right because the more you go to your right, the more the tree shows up behind the fish. And if you go too far to the left, it's hard to tell that it's a fish because you start to lose the face. So um, I had seen this once before and this time when I went back, um, I got lucky that there was actually someone at the bottom of the frame. He's kind of really helps to create scale for this. And this is just, um, handrails going upstairs. I just put the camera up to the bottom of the handrails and, and just played around. There's a really neat window up ahead. It was just a matter of waiting for people to walk up the stairs. This is another one of my favorite things is doing, again, doing things like this. You're putting your camera in places where a lot of people wouldn't expect to see it. And, um, and I try and do the same thing when I'm using my, my regular cameras for work. more shapes and uh, again, waiting for people to walk through the large gigantic circle, kind of mimicked by this little tiny circle to the left. And you have all these really neat horizontal lines and vertical lines, it's just kind of fun. And then of course you've got one kind of one 
one offsetting line there. Again, have more lights. Um, I love shadows. My favorite thing, finding stuff like this and just trying to make it work. And um, just waiting for someone to kind of walk in. And, you know, it's obviously critical where the front of this little boy's face is, because obviously once it gets into any of the shadow areas, there's no picture to be made. It's my two puppies. <laughs> um, more silhouettes, again, using shapes and lines um, and trying to fill the frame as much as possible. Again, here's another picture with clouds. Like once I see the clouds, it's like, okay, what do I do? Where do I go? How do you make a picture using the clouds? Because um, I don't have the original photo with this, but obviously there's blue skies and there's a lot of clouds. So once you turn that into black and white, um, those clouds really pop. If anyone knows Carl Ferran from the newspaper, Carl went outside of our office one day to shoot a really nasty storm and um, the rain was hitting the window and I just started having fun taking his picture outside and obviously framing him within what I can create a silhouette and uh, a photo of him. Another one by the Inner Harbor. Again, it's just uh, finding what your frame looked like. I'm pretty sure that this, the bottom of this frame did not end right here. You know, I was envisioning where these lines would be and then I just kind of cropped up from the bottom. And just, again, it's a timing thing. I'm sure I shot several people trying to walk through here and then to pick out the best one uh, where someone was centered within the lines. I think this, this one has two versions. This is another one. This is the same photo, just cropped differently. And I had a hard time. I couldn't decide when I was playing with this. I, I kind of liked that, but then I thought, well, the legs at the bottom were getting a little lost. You were kind of losing all the lines at the top. So I just kept playing. This is what I do. I, I play with crops and see what works, what doesn't work. So here's another one. This was at, um, this is at Pimlico. And so this is the original frame. And I, I cropped this all sorts of ways when I first shot this. I shot it like this and then I just kept playing with it. What can I do? How can I, it just, it had a lot of things when I cropped it um, to have both lines in the frame. It seemed like this guy was getting lost. And I really loved the body language. He kind of looked like a cowboy with like a long coat hanging from behind. Yeah. Um, and this is the way I decided to crop it after playing with it. And what this is, this, wow. is, a, um, this is a garbage bag. He's walking with a garbage bag. It actually looks like a, a coat. Um, so again, I really do think that um, cropping is really important to, to all pictures. There are times where you can fill your frame exactly the way you want it, but I really do think that um, how you crop your picture, your picture can really change the impact of it. And I know you mentioned about working with interns. That's something that I really enjoy doing. Um, and I actually spent yesterday working with the, the intern that we have this year, talking to him about exactly that, like the little things that are on the edges of your frames that don't help your photo that the viewer can get lost in. I was working with him on getting rid of them so that the viewer sees exactly what you want them to see and they don't get lost looking at too many things in your photo that you don't need in there. This is a photo oh. walk uh, that I took part in, which was kind of fun. And you know we do a lot of portraiture at the paper. So trying to figure out ways how to, you know, photograph someone in a space is, um, is one of the things that I enjoy the most. A lot of times when we go to assignments, um, I have no idea what the space looks like until I get there. And then you have to figure out how to make it all work. And again, it's like a puzzle. Like all these things are almost like a little puzzle. Like how do you fit the two pieces together to make them work with three pieces or four pieces? Same with the layers. It's more shapes and designs. More from Pimlico. And this was kind of fun. This is again, another Pimlico picture. They were getting ready for a fashion, little fashion shoot that they were doing. You can actually see she still has her tag hanging here and that they got tucked under. Obviously they're returning this hat when they get done. Um, 
I was obviously brought in by all these little polka dots and the hat and, um, and just kind of putting her in there in that space. Um, and again, this, so this is, I started to mention earlier is that that point of no return that many times when you're going to photograph something, and I'm sure you've all had this happen, you pick your camera up to shoot something and someone is getting ready to walk into your frame and they stop walking because they don't want to mess your photo up. And a lot of times it's those people that I want to walk into my frame. So what I do is um, in a situation like this, I'm, I'm pre-focused in an area where people are walking and I keep my camera face down. I have it, it's all ready to go. The camera's on, it's already pre-focused. I know exactly what I'm going to do. And I wait for someone to walk fully into the frame before I pick the camera up to shoot. So this way they don't say, oh, I'm sorry, I don't want to mess your photo up and they stop walking. And then you say, no, that's okay. You know, I'm, I'm, you're fine. And by that point, that, that moment's kind of gone, you know, when I'm trying to take that picture. So I have this thing that I call a point of no return that once, once, once they're walking to your frame and you pick your camera up, even if they notice you're taking their picture, they, they have to continue through the frame to get where they're going. And then you could still take their picture. Um, so that's one of the things that I do a lot. I have to not let people know that I want them in my picture. Another one from BWI. More shapes. So this one actually, this is a cell phone picture. This one was actually not shot with um, in the square format. And this was this was Assateague Island. You, know, you have the ponies running around. I saw the guys getting ready to to walk down the beach with their surfboards over their head. So it's a matter of I just basically parked myself. I saw them coming. I focused on where they were going to be, and I just kind of waited for them to enter the frame, and then made some pictures of it. And this is another version of that same thing that you watched the video on. Just it's that same parking garage door, just a different vantage point. So this is a reflection off the windshield of a car. And then some really simple things. Um, playing basketball with my son, we got done playing, we got in the car and I started to drive away. And then I hopped out and, you know, it's like, what are you doing? I'm like, well, look at the tree. It, it was just, it, the clouds are what make, obviously makes this photo. Just a simple tree, but the clouds are, I, I always find the clouds to be beautiful. That's out playing with one of my dogs. And obviously when you're shooting water, um, anytime you can get a really dark background, that's the way you can get water to show up. So if you're shooting fountains or people spraying water, you try and figure out, take the angle where it's gonna be either backlit or you have a really dark background so that your water really shows up. And she just kept shaking all over the place. So it was just a matter of trying to figure out if I was gonna be able to stop her tail from moving with the shutter speed on the cell phone. There's another one this is during um, a photo walk that we did and just explained to people to be able to change angles, um, look at the backgrounds, try and find interesting lines and shapes. Same with this one, it's just a little pocket of light. And again, just waiting for someone to, uh, to walk through the frame. Same with this one. So you can tell how close I am, same thing. I'm pretty sure I, I must've kept the camera down, had it pre-focused and waited for him to walk through. And he was perfect too. He had the great socks on, he had the, he had the coat. And, uh, and then the other thing too is um, the way he's kind of framed in here, this is something that, that I try to do as best as I can. So if I know there's something specific I'm trying to frame someone in, and this is a really narrow space here. Once I see them walk into this frame over here, I can judge how tall they are. So I am going to move the camera obviously up and down to make sure that his head is, is in this frame. Because if his head ends up like cutting through this 
or the front of his face is cutting through this, it's, it's not going to work. So again, those are like the little details that I look for when I'm shooting, is making sure that whatever is the most important part, which obviously is his face, and then the body language, I love the kind of little toe up, toe down. Again, different perspectives using shapes and light. More shapes. Again, these are just fun, fun things to do. And this is the last one. This actually is um, some type of mannequin that's in the window. I think this over near Port Discovery somewhere. And that's the last one that I have here. So I'm gonna pull this off real quick. Great. Okay. Oh, Lloyd. Um, I'm going to say a little bit more later, but everybody, you can turn on your um, video, audio, and ask away if you'd like. Um, I'm assuming, Lloyd, it's okay. It's 9.05. We've still got Yeah, you. absolutely. Okay, good. Whatever, whatever, you, whatever you need. I'm, I'm okay. here. Okay. I have a feeling there's okay. going to be a few. Yeah, this has been... Well, I feel like uh, it's been for me, like this was a personal choice for me because I'm a, a huge fan of your Instagram photos. So I'm just soaking it up. I can't wait to go out and shoot. And uh, you've given me all things to think about. Um, I am gonna start with just one question. Um, photo walks, you mentioned photo walks. What yeah. Are you, yeah, what are you talking about? So um, before the pandemic, um, there were a couple of guys that asked me to kind of take part in um, a few photo walks, which we did, which I really enjoyed. I met a lot of people going out and we, they kind of picked a spot, kind of like what you guys do as well. They would okay. pick a spot and we'd all get together and go out. We also did one um, with the Baltimore Sun. We had our, we did our own photo walk and we kind of put it out there and a whole bunch of people came out. And what we did was we, had people send us their photos and then we created a gallery online and published the photos online as part of the photo walk, which I really enjoyed because I really do like working with people, um, you know, answering questions. You know, everyone brings something different to the table. You don't have to be a professional photographer to go out and take really nice pictures. I've seen the quality of work that you guys do because I've, I've judged the contest before. So I know, you know, what, what you all can do. And, um, Again, just because I'm a professional photographer does not mean that if I go out, I'm going to take the best pictures. It's, you know, everyone has a different eye. Everyone brings something different to the table when they go out. So you always, I've always picked up different things from different people. And um, so the photo walks were a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. I hope we'll be able to do it again now that things are getting a little bit better. Uh, we can, you know. How would, we know, how would we know if you're doing one? Well, if we do do another one, I will definitely let you know and you can okay. let everyone know. Okay, good. If we so, do that. I would love to. I will be on it. Okay, questions, you guys. Um, I have a question. I want to know what si what are the size of your images. Uh, when I shoot with my iPhone, I don't get really large files. These are small. I think, like when I was sending these over um, to, to put some of these together, they're, they're like a couple megabytes a piece. By the time I put them into Snapseed and then crop them, and they, however, Snapseed saves them because I'm not doing it in Photoshop, Snapseed saves them. They're, they're small files. They're only a, a few megabytes, a few megs a piece. So they're not big. So they're not meant to be, uh, you know you're not meant to make these into big prints or anything like that. I'm not sure how they would really hold up. I did have someone make a print for me and send it to me and it was pretty neat. Um, I don't know if he's doing it anymore. Um, this guy made salt prints. So he takes, somehow he takes your photo and he actually prints it in a dark room. And um, he actually sent me a copy of it. It's one of my prized possessions. It was really nice of him to do that. And it looked, it actually looked really nice. It was on really nice um, fiber paper. And I think what it did was it actually, it hides some of the imperfections in like your cell phone photo because it's on a, if everyone, if anyone ever printed on like real, real paper before the, the image kind of bleeds into the paper a little bit. So it created, it's just, it was really nice. 
Thank you. Sure. Small files work perfectly for the use that you're giving them, but I wondered if you would be able to make a large print of any of them. Yeah, I think, you know, they're small files. I haven't really tried it. Um, again, I know they're being viewed on the cell phone and, and that's kind of what it's meant for. Um, I'm sure if I entered them in any of your contest, they would never win because the quality would be pretty bad by the time they made it to eight by 10 or 11 by 14. Oh. So, um, but it's, you know, it's it, everything. What's that? I said, I would love to have a bunch of your pictures on my wall. Well, I, I appreciate it. At some point I'll try and, uh, I'll try and print some and see how they come out. I definitely will let you know. Okay, great. They turn out. Okay. Um, I just wanted to respond to something that Kay said. Um, Kay, you can now, if you have a, a newer phone, you can um, get an app where, oh, wait, am I? No, I'm not muted. Okay, you can uh, get a raw app. So you, can shoot, you can shoot in raw. And then you, if you want a large image, you can shoot large. Oh, huh. thank you. They can, they can be quite big. <laughs> Good. I'm Good. Who else? Uh, hello, hi, um, right. this is Sukul. I just wanted to let you know, I loved your images and uh, the only thing I, I, I just see where you're going and I can picture it and all that in my head. Uh, the only thing is what I miss is the patience. I yes. don't have patience at all. Mm -hmm. I keep moving from one to another because I'm, I think ADHD, I guess. I, I, I wish I had the patience to wait at a spot and take those images which you are seeing. And yeah, I, I, I'm kind of the same way. You know, I, I don't know if it's because I've been doing it so long that this gives me the opportunity to not feel rushed. You know, I had a shoot yesterday, that I think just posted online today, and it was with a 102-year-old um, war veteran. And I had to shoot in his house and there was almost no space. I mean, it was really tight. It's a small space and I'm trying to figure out, okay, how am I going to make a picture of him? How, what am I going to do here? Um, I brought some lights and I was trying to figure out how to do a nice portrait of him. I think my most favorite portrait, I have a feeling is not even going to run. Um, but uh, everything moves so fast when you're doing that. And I think this gives me the opportunity where I could really slow down. I can just mm -hmm. find something. And, and make it work. There have been plenty of times where I go and I sit and I wait, I find something really neat, but then there are no people in the, no people mm -hmm. coming through. Mm -hmm. And then it just, to me, it doesn't, it doesn't make a picture, at least for me. Yeah. There right. are other people that shoot, you know, landscapes and it would look really pretty as its own little landscape. But what I'm trying to do is have, I love having people in because that's like the extra little something that I like to put in there that makes it a little harder to, to make it happen. So, yeah, it's hard because you don't want to go out and stand in one spot for an hour and mm -hmm. come up with nothing when you're trying to make pictures. Yeah, I, I have that, what we call fear of missing out. I, I feel like, oh, I'm here. I don't get anything. So maybe I should rush over to the other side. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think I don't you know, get the anything there either. <laughs> yeah, I, and I think the difference is when you know other people are out shooting, like when you guys go out, right? To, to an area to take pictures and you know everyone's shooting, I'm sure everyone wants to make sure they make pictures because they don't want to be the one person, right? That comes back without okay. something to show when other people might be making five, six or seven pictures. So I guess, it's, um, yeah, the patience thing, I guess that's an individual thing. Like mm -hmm. I, I'd be more happy to go out and make one really nice picture mm -hmm. yeah. than to have seven okay photos. Yeah, and, I, and that's kind of the approach I take with my work at the paper. Like it, to me, it's about quality and not quantity. Like, mm -hmm. and I tell the other photographers that too, like you don't have to put a gallery together that has 20 pictures. Give me five really good ones, you know, or if you can make mm -hmm. only one really, really good photo for the paper, make one really, really good photo because that's when we're going to publish in the paper. So um, I don't know, you know, maybe you try that sometime. If you find something you really like and just wait mm -hmm. it out and say, you know what? I only want to make one nice picture today. You know, Thank and you. not five or six. Sometimes, can you um, do you or do you ever with the reflections or anything or an answer to Suku? 
um, ever film and then take a screenshot from that to get your photo? Yeah. No, not for the Instagram stuff. The only time we ever do that at the paper, and, and we don't even do that anymore. Once in a while, if we ever had like a spot news event where we had to shoot some video and might have pulled a screen grab from it. But yeah, I don't do that. Because it's, it's still pretty about easy with the cell phone. Yep. To take a screen. Yeah, but that takes the Just fun film out of it. a little bit and then you take a screenshot of what you like. I yeah. I go over to Washington a lot and I'm in the car, so like I'll do a film and yeah. then screenshot because I might, you know, there might be only one second there that I drove by yeah. the Capitol or something that was interesting. Sure. I guess it depends on what you're trying to do. I mean, if you're trying to get a, just like a really nice photo of something, um, obviously you can do that. Um, I guess it's up to the, each individual photographer what they're trying to get out of it. You know, to me, I was just thinking still... of your reflections as you move around, move the cell phone around the reflections, sure. if you had ever done that. That's just. Yeah, no, I've never done video and then and grab the screenshot, but I know I know what you're saying. It's still to me, it's still about the fun. It's like that challenge of trying to pull it off, trying to make it work. Can you make it work? Did you miss the moment? Um, trust me, I've had plenty of those. You know, plenty of times I walked away and said, oh, you missed it. The one time you walk away, and that that happens a lot to the other gentleman who was just up a minute ago, you know, you wait there, you wait there and you wait there, and then you walk away. And then as you're walking away, you turn back and the person is now walking through your frame exactly where you wanted them with the hat and with the right clothing. <laughs> that happens. That's just part of it. You know, sometimes you make it and sometimes uh, you don't. No, that really... Uh... I appreciate, aside from the quality of your picture, I appreciate when you contribute, man. I decided there's nothing to, to shoot in Baltimore anymore. And you, <laughs> you've proven that it's so not true. There's a lot to create. There's not, maybe probably not much to shoot, but there's a lot of um, places where you can create. And I think you've demonstrated that. And I'm very grateful for that. Sure. Well, you're, you're welcome. Thank you very much. I, you know, there are times that I walk around the city and, um, you know, I see these beautiful photos that people take in, in other parts of, 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 of the country. Um, but I think it's, it's when you look at the big picture and it's like what you're saying, it's like you, you can drill down and find that, that little piece of something. And what I do with the cell phone is so different. Like if you had told me 10 or 12 years ago that I'd be doing stuff like this, like shooting art type stuff. Um, I would have said, no, nah, I'm not going to be doing that. I'm a sports guy. I shoot news. I shoot sports. I shoot features. I don't shoot. I don't even know what you call this. I don't know. It's fine art. I don't even know, but it's, it's more art than anything else. So mm -hmm. um, it is there, you know, it's kind of like when you go to a football game or a baseball game, somewhere in that stadium, there's an award-winning photo, right? Somewhere during the game, there's a special moment. And you're always trying to capture that special moment and you might not, but it's there. And I think it's the same in Baltimore. There are those pockets of places if, you, if you're looking for them that you can find that are, um, that are interesting and that are beautiful and in, in depending on how you look at it. Mm -hmm. Through a garbage can. Um, Lloyd, uh, this is yeah. Kenny. Uh, hey, first Kenny. of all, I wanna let you know, I really enjoyed your photo work. And uh, uh, just two comments on it. Um, I like your decision on cropping um, your photos, uh, narrowing it down to uh, get to the most important part of the, uh, of the uh, image. Because I find that a, a lot of the young photographers, they either don't crop enough or they crop too much. And you seem to have, you're very thoughtful in where you're cropping it to give the uh, photo impact. So I really enjoyed that. And then the second thing I, I also like about your, your photo work, I like hearing your process, how, you know, you're looking at an image and your thought process, process of how you're going to go get to the finished image. And I think um, that's important for photographers to think about when they come up on a scene, what am I looking at? What am I, what am I trying to create as my finished image before I even um, push the button? And so I, I really appreciate that. And I could see that all through your, 
your work and I like your framing with in framing, your layering of your photo. I, I, your, your work is excellent. Appreciate it. Sure. Thank you very much. I think, um, you know, a long time ago, I had a, um, a photo teacher. A couple mm -hmm. of things that he taught me, um, he had me, he had me do this thing where I'd go out and take a picture of someone. Mm -hmm. And then he'd say, I want you to turn away and I want you to write everything down that you saw in that photo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like everything. What, what was in the background? What's in the foreground? Where are the lines? Where are the shapes? What were the colors? And what it did was it really taught me to, to really pay attention to everything that was going on in the frame. And mm -hmm. it's kind of what you were talking about, especially with some of the our younger interns that come in. You really need to think about like everything that's in the frame. It's not just the subject. It's how that subject is interacting with the background, how they're interacting with the light, the layers, like it's, it's everything. And I think after a while, you, at least for me, I don't think about it as much because I'm doing it. You know, I'm moving like literally an inch, inch to the left, inch to the right, inch up, inch down. That can make a huge difference in where a face is or what's sticking out of someone's head. Or, um, you know, like I was talking with the intern yesterday, what I did was I took, I took four or five of his photos he's doing a great job he's, he might be one of the best interns we ever had but i'm not going to tell him that because i don't want to be <laughs> but i love this kid he's really good he's like a go-getter he just wants to keep working he was kind of like me when i was like, just keeps going and keeps going and keeps going yeah. so i took four of his pictures and i said look all your stuff is really great but when, when you're judged on your work so like when people send portfolios in mm -hmm. you're, you're judged on your weakest work so if you send 20 pictures in for me to look at and they're all really good, but two of them are kind of weak. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna look at those two mm -hmm. and say, okay, why are these two weak? Does that mean that picture number 22, 23, 24, and 25 are also weak? Or mm -hmm. does that mean maybe you don't know how to edit your work? Like it's all about making mm -hmm. sure that everything looks really good. So I took four of his photos and I said, look, these are your photos. So I'm not gonna tell you how to crop them because they're yours. Like they mean something to you, but I'm gonna tell you if they were mine, here's what I would do to them. Mm -hmm. And I took his photos and I showed him like, you have a couple of things on both sides of your frame that, that aren't helping. You know, it's like someone's arm, the little sliver of an arm. It was really tiny on one side and there was part of a person on another. And I said, just bring it in a little bit and then you can focus in right. on what you want the subject to look at, what you want the viewer to look at. Mm -hmm. Because you can control a lot about, actually, you mind if I bring something else up, Sandy? What? Can I pull something else up? Can oh, yeah. I share something? Yeah, share. Okay, let's see if I can pull it up here. So, let's see if I still have those pictures. Okay. So, when I was talking to our intern, I was explaining to him that you really can control what the viewer looks at and where they go. Okay, can you see this? Yes. 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 Okay, so I'm sorry to get off, off topic of black and white, but so this was one of his pictures that he shot the other day, which is a beautiful photo. And I really like it. And I said to him, I said, like, what's the most important thing about this photo? And I said, to me, it's, it's this guy's face, yep. right? Yep. This, is, this is the focal point, right? Yep. Like you've got the face, you got stuff dripping, you got stuff all over. The other thing is just all the legs and mm -hmm. arms that mm -hmm. are in this photo yes. make this really interesting. Yeah. I said the things that don't make it interesting are this one kind of you got to get it's kind of bright up here, and you got a body cut off. Mm -hmm. This guy's t-shirt not helping the photo. This really white back is not really helping the photo. So I said, if you play with it a little bit, you can really get to what the most important thing is, which is mm -hmm. his face. You don't want the viewer to get lost trying mm -hmm. to find his face because this is a really nice photo and you see it, but it takes you a little while because you, you're like, okay, well, I'm going here, I'm going there, I'm coming back. So yep. bring it in tight, you know, so that I can control what you see and when you see it. And then all these other things are really great supporting pieces, right. mm -hmm. all these body parts, really nice. Mm -hmm. And so here's another one. Um, this is this is really minor, but like this little thing in the left hand corner up here, yeah. and this little leg right down here. Mm -hmm. um, I said just just get rid of it. 
and I cropped it from the top down. I said, you know, what's important here is this, this little yeah. kid and these two people. I said, I like your leading lines here, but just get rid of that. So Boy, here's the other one I was telling you. Yeah. Uh, could you hide that um, No, at the bottom? Yeah, just hide that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, sure. So here's the other picture. And these are the little things I do in my photos. So over here on the left, you have this orange sleeve and the foot on the far left. And over here, you have the woman on the right. What's important here is what's going on here. Yeah, yeah. You know, this guy, mm. guy and his dad. And the intern is really good at this. He's really good at finding things away from the game, away from the real action. And he, he makes these great moments. So I said, what you need to do is you need to get rid of this, but you gotta be careful because you don't wanna cut this guy's face in half. And if you come in too tight on this woman here, you kind of lose that flow that you have going on. So I gave him a crop, just you know, really carefully getting rid of this little sleeve. It's minor, it's, a, it's the most minor thing. But to me, it makes a big difference because now you're really focused in on this. You still get to enjoy what's going on over here with these people and even with this gentleman and then the woman on the right, um, I cropped her out. because Really just, it just wasn't helping me. And then the last one um, was a little bit about toning. And so this was his photo, which is a nice photo that he took. I said, but what I'm getting lost in is I'm focusing on these boxes down here because this is the brightest thing in your photograph. I can't see back here because it's too, it's too dark. So what I did was I opened them up a little bit and I also cropped in a little bit from the left so these little red things over here, your eye kind of wants to just keep looking over here, but yeah. by getting rid of it, you have this really nice frame now that goes around these two guys. I open them up just a little bit yeah. and I, I burn down. So there's a little burning and dodging going on here too. But, but again, it's still about these little detail things about cropping that really do make a difference in a photo. Even if you don't notice it, you can help the viewer not get lost. They mm. go right to those two people. And then all this other stuff is just really nice um, type stuff in here. And then back to them, then one more. This was another one that he took. This is a really nice moment with um, a mother, obviously, and, and her son. And I told him, you know, I love this and I like it, but I'm getting a little lost. You can kind of see where I'm going. You, know, you have a guy over here, you have half his face cut off. Um, you got a leg up here. So, you know, Bring it in. You can change cropping a little bit. I probably come down from the top a little bit more, but little detail stuff that I really do think. Um, I'll drop this off now. That really help images that you might not think about too much, but I really do think that it helps. It helps photos. Little detail stuff. Sorry to go off on that tangent, but I really, when you talk about the cropping, it's really, that's really important to me when I'm working on my own images or working right. with other photographers. It's like really, you know, if it's not helping, then somehow get rid of it, but still keep the flow of the image going. Yeah, that was a great lesson on cropping. I love it. Yeah. Sorry, had, had nothing to do with black and white photography and iPhone but, photography. No, yeah. but so you have to go to black and white later. <laughs> You know, I, because I, I think, you know, like a lot of people don't realize that when you're looking at a scene, you have um, you have pictures inside of a picture. And uh, and, and, and you can find them. You, got, you just got to look hard. I mean, just like the, the, the photo of the Naval Academy. That's a good example of cropping in. And then that photo has greater impact um, than if it was wider. So even though the, the that whole picture is a picture but the real picture was inside. And, exactly. I, and I think that's where cropping can help a lot of people. And I, I, I really like your decisions and how you determine where you're gonna carry the photo as far as a crop is concerned and creating the impact from the crop. So. Yeah, and, and you play, sometimes you just, you just say to yourself, you know, I'm just gonna crop in and see what it looks like, even if you're not sure. And then you look at it and you're like, you know what, it looks better. Or you know what, um, it's missing too much by doing that. You go back out. You know, it's um, it's all about what feels good. You know, everyone again has a different perspective on what they like. Um, and some people would say, you know what, I like that little piece on the end. Okay, 
go with it. You know, that's your picture. So boy, do you shoot a little wider so that you have the room to crop in where you want, or you try to make that conscious decision up front? I try and do it up front. Mm-hmm. It's a, I mean, I'm a sports guy. I mean, I used to shoot really tight, mm-hmm. like really tight sports stuff. Cause I always love really getting in close. Like tr- again, for the reader to see stuff that they wouldn't normally see. Mm-hmm. Um, the only time I really shoot loose, loose is if like a designer has said to me, Hey, this is going to be a cover shot mm-hmm. and we need some room for some text on the top and this and that. And th- those are the times that I back off a little bit more. So I give the designer some room, but for the most part, I'm trying to fill it as best as I can. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, if any photographer says that they never have to crop because all their pictures are perfect, then they're, they're lying to you. Yeah. <laughs> That's just, it's just impossible. Right. Um, I mean, yeah, you can fill it closely, but there's always some tweaking mm-hmm. that, that usually has to be done. I mean, I wish I could fill every single frame perfectly, but it yeah. doesn't always happen. Or you take a picture and then you realize, oh, you know what? I didn't notice this or I didn't notice that, but it looks better by bringing it in or blowing it up a little bit. Right. Well, thank you for your insight. Sure. So do you have any other questions? I guess not. Lloyd, once again, thank you so much. I can tell by um, questions in the chat room and engagement from uh, members that um, you really engaged us and helped taught us, you taught me um, and inspired me. So for that, thank you so much. It's just been absolutely delightful. I've been, yeah. I've wanted to have you, I think you remember, I contacted you a couple of years ago. No, I remember. I remember. <laughs> I'm sorry it's taking so long, but thank you. No, thank you very much for having me. It's a, it's always fun to share work and see other people's work and take something from it. You know, it's, um, I do that all the time. I mean, mm-hmm. I've been doing this for a long time, but I still, I still find things that people do that, that inspire me all the time. So I'm glad I can hopefully inspire other people with that work as well. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you and thank you everybody else for joining us tonight. And um, so anyway, do let us know if there is a photo walk with the sun. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. that would I will be definitely let you know. If we, okay. If we set good. another one of us up, I will definitely let you know. Okay, good. Great. All right. But good night, everybody. Right. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks. That's fabulous. I can't wait to go out and shoot. I'm going out tomorrow. No, I guess (laughs) it's Saturday. It's raining tomorrow. Okay, bye. Shoot in the rain. Yeah, I could. Yeah. Bye. 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 Gonna end the meeting now.